This is Twit. Uh, the, the thing that I'm, I'm curious about here, um, the there seems to be... Th- a separation because with language literacy, the point there was for human beings to talk to other human beings in a streamlined way. With mathematical literacy, again, a lot of that is like human to human where I can write down eight and then this little uh, horizontal line and vertical line and two and then two horizontal lines and then uh, one and a zero and people, humans know what that means. But with computational language, that's specifically for talking to computers. So does that make oh. it more difficult or how does that work? That's the neat thing. It's both for talking to computers and for talking to humans. Okay. And that's kind of a, a big difference between sort of the programming language idea and the computational language idea. Uh, part of what is really important, I think, about you know our Wolfram language, the computational language we built, is that it's something that's readable not only by computers. I mean, the the real superpower comes from having it be readable by computers and executable by computers. But there's another piece, which is having it be readable by humans. So just like if you're, you know, if you're a technical person, you would read some technical paper. It'll have mathematical equations in it, and so on. Uh, you know, it's it might have a big blob of code, but that's probably pretty unreadable. Mm. Um, the 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 thing is with our computational language. It's something which is kind of high enough level and kind of aimed to be something that can really express ideas as crisply as possible in computational terms. And so you have the computational language right there in the document. We have these things called notebooks that we invented actually back in 1988. They've become they've become quite popular in recent years, but but um, they're, they're the same as they were back in 1988, although we've had 30 years to kind of polish how they work. Yeah. The... Uh, it's um, an, you know, a kind of a notebook as a mixture of uh, human language and computational language. And, and kind of the, the form of exposition that I'm really keen on these days is what I call a computational essay, where you're trying to explain something and you're using human language, but you're also using computational language as part of explaining your point. So the computational language is something that other humans can read but by the way, also the computational language within the notebook is something that gets understood by by a computer and, and then the computer might produce an output. So like, for example, you might say, I don't know, um, you know, make a, uh, you know, you, you have the, the, the a plot of the tides as a function of time in your, in your local, I think you, uh, maybe you're near the coast. I'm not sure if you're near the coast. Yeah, pretty, but, pretty near, but, yeah. Okay, so, so let's say that, you know, um, make a... Uh, um, a, a date list plot of the tide data for your place over this range of time from now minus three weeks to now or something. And, and that's something where you can see that piece of computational language and it's very easy to understand what it is and it's very precise. Even though it's easy for us to understand, every piece of it is something that has a precise definition um, and uh, uh, you can probably guess what it is, but right. you could go look it up and, and see that that's really what the definition actually is. Um, but then then the computer would generate the output um, and, uh, and have it right there in your computational essay. So in a sense, it's a little more difficult to write a computational essay in the sense that you have to not just write sort of natural language, English text or whatever that other humans could understand, but you also have to write computational language that humans could understand, but also that is sort of precisely correct in the sense that you really are saying what you mean so that a computer can understand it. But then the big sort of superpower is that that computational language then gets uh, executed by the computer and there you have this great result um, right there in your computational essay. And you know, three quarters of the page you create um, is done automatically for you, so to speak, and makes beautiful graphics or whatever else it is. So, but I think this idea of a computational essay as a way to communicate ideas um, is it's a really powerful thing. And I think, you know, as we see these different fields of, uh, of sort of human endeavor, I mean, for, for sort of almost anything called X, whether it's, um, I don't know, archeology, span zoology, literary criticism, uh, you know, television production, I don't know. There's sort of a, a, um, uh, a computational X that either exists now or that will exist in the future and the question is sort of what's the, uh, how do you, what, what's the sort of language 
that allows you to express what you need to talk about for that computational X. And I think that's what we now have with our computational language. And I think what we'll see is the same kind of sort of uh, explosion of possibilities that happened a few hundred years ago now when mathematical notation came in and when it was possible to start having sort of mathematically informed uh, areas of science and engineering and so on. So that, that's it's kind of an exciting thing because it's this moment when we get, kind of get this, this new form of communication um, that uh, uh, allows us to kind of um, uh, take advantage of all that power that exists in computers and AI and so on. And this is kind of the bridge between our ways of thinking and what the machines can, can, uh, can powerfully do for us.